Horonar mı işler bu? Hürmetli iştirakçılar, iltimaslar, mikrofonla uçurup kirli, iltimas. Merkez bu kuruya şey işler bu. Merkez. İştiler, iştiler. Merhaba. Merkez bu kuru yaşlı işler bu. Yaşlı, yaşlı. Selamünaleyküm. Zerine. Da, salam alikum. İştilat, iştilat. İştilat mı oldu? İştilat, hanımız. Peki, salam alikum. Verim, çarçak mı yapsın? Rahmet, asıl etsin. Omat da leyme. Rahmet. Zerin, bana ait ki ambos akire ki sayıdaf ki e jolu boya ki ki link taşa pullar diye yapar tuvici falar kanslar.
Assalamu alaikum, hürmetli iştirakçılar. Bugün konferansımızda 900'den ortak adamla registrasyon kılışken. Şunun için az yine kutturamız. Hama koşul günü için 5 minutla da başlayınız. Rahmat. İltimas kılardık. Mikrofonlarını uçurup kılışıyla. Rahmat. O, bu oldu. Rahmat. Good afternoon everyone. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you well, very well. Thank you. Um, Pamadi, uh, are we still accepting people, participants? Yes, uh, because about 900 people have registered to our current conference. We'll have to wait for about five minutes to let them in. Okay, those who cannot uh, come to the Zoom because uh, it's limited to 500 participants uh, can follow through YouTube. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Hello. All right, I think we can uh, begin now. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Good afternoon, everyone. Selamat siang. Your Excellency, Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia, Dr. Sandiaga Salahuddin Uno. Your Excellency, Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Mr. Aziz Abdul Hakimov. Your Excellency, Ambassador of the Republic of Uzbekistan to the Excuse me, excuse me, Ms. Defi, uh, we cannot hear you, sorry. Maybe there is uh, some connection issues. Okay, just a moment.
Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can hear. Excuse me, uh, Miss Defi, can you hear us? Uh, from Indonesian side, uh, is there a moderator uh, who is able to uh, continue? Hello, uh, Indonesian side, can you hear us? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, and uh, the mother. Hello. Sure, sure, ma'am, we hear you. Oh, thank you. We still wait. Is there be? Yes, we are calm. Just a minute. Yeah. She has a problem with the CEO. Yeah. Is there be? Welcome back. Now we can hear you very well. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry for the, the problem of the connection. Yes, thank you. And we can go on. Okay. okay. Excuse me, dear participants, could you please uh, turn off your microphones? Uh, Miss Devi, uh, can we start our session? Is there any problems with connection? Yes, I can join right now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we can go on. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Good afternoon, everyone. Selamat And to ADF Economy of the Republic of Indonesia, Dr. Sandiaga Salahuddin Uno. Your Excellency, Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Mr. Aziz Abdul Hakimov, Ambassador of the Republic of Mr. Ulukbek Rozukulov, Distinguished Speakers, Professor Joseph Chir from Wakayama University. Good afternoon, Professor. And um, Mr. Temur Mirzaev, Advisor to the Minister of Tourism of Uzbekistan. Mr. Hari Setiawan from Borobudur Conservation Office. Mr. Ali John Rafshanov from International Islamic Academy of Uzbekistan. 
and Mr. Asros Asror Sultanov from the Center for the Honorable Rector, Vice Rectors, and Deans of Universitas and the Director of Tourism Development Institute of Uzbekistan Boards, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the online joint international seminar co-organized by Universitas Pancasila and Tourism Development Institute of Uzbekistan with the theme Evoking Mind and Spirit Through Heritage and Spiritual Tourism, Lessons from Indonesia and Uzbekistan. This joint international seminar marks the start of cooperation between the two uh, institutions in an MOU that was signed by the two parties in February 2021. My name is Devi Kausa, currently the Dean of the Faculty of Tourism, Universitas Pancasila, and it is an honor for me to be the host of today's event, accompanied by Dr. Elena Golisheva. Before we proceed, to the main event, let's join us as we honor the national anthems of the two countries. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Indonesia. Uzbekistan.
Thank you very much. Distinguished audience, today we are grateful and excited to have Mrs. Rizky Handayani as the Deputy Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy for Tourism Products, Mice and Event, who will speak on behalf of the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, Republic of Indonesia, Dr. Sandiaga Salahuddin Uno. We believe that Mrs. Rizky uh, could share with us the policy direction for the development of heritage and spiritual tourism in Indonesia. Mrs. Rizky Handayani, without further ado, the time is yours. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam uh, wabarakatuh. His Excellency Mr. Aziz Abdukakimov, Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism and Sport of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Professor Joseph Sher from Wakayama University, Mr. Temur Mirzaev, Advisor to Ministry of Tourism, Mr. Haris Tiawan, Borobudur Conservatory Office, Ali John Ras Rafshanov, the International Islamic Academy of Uzbekistan, Mr. Asraf Sultanov, Center for Standardization and Certification of Tourism, and all the participants of the webinar. A, a very good afternoon uh, and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, let me convey an apology from the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, Bapak Sandiaga Saladin Uno, for not being able to present as, at this webinar. He sent a, a, a very good uh, greetings uh, and hopefully this, his, uh, this seminar will run uh, smoothly and give them a fruitful discussion uh, later on. And furthermore, I like to congratulate Tourism Faculty of Universitas Pancasila team for organizing this very important webinar with particular and attractive topic of evoking mind and spirit through heritage and spiritual tourism, lesson from Indonesia and Uzbekistan. Uh, as we know in the last while, in the last years, we've been experiencing some storms and dark clouds due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The impact is really hurting us, but I truly believe that this industry, the tourism industry, will once again rise and prove itself as industry which is resilient to the crisis. The Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy is aware of these changes and have prepared strategy recovery actions from this issue. With, with according to the Minister Sandiaga Uno said that action have, be, have to be delivered in adaptive, innovative, and collaborative way to deliver the right time, the right target and purpose. And this webinar, I think is one of the example that we need to collaborate each other. As we know that Uzbekistan in Indonesia has the same spirit and we are already, the relationship between two countries, it's very good. And then also because we have the same uh, visions uh, uh, on the development of tourism. Uh, in the strategy, we are enforcing the, des uh, the destination revitalization and market confidence enhancement so that tourists will feel safe to travel to Indonesia. Our strategy in 2020 is to prepare the destinations with our, uh, pro we, we focusing on to set up the protocol of we call it cleanliness, health, security, and environmental sustainability, or CHSE, for several tourism and creative economy industry. We prepare about 15 protocol, and last year we start to implement it, uh, this protocol in our tourism destinations, and we also release uh, uh, doing the certifications of the uh, tourism industry such as hotel, restaurants, and golf, and also some attractions in order to make the tourists feel safe when they come or they visit that, uh, uh, the destinations. 
Secondly, we conducting some in, yeah, initiative to recover our domestic uh, and international tourism. Uh, of course, that in 2021, we still focusing on uh, domestic tourism as we still as the border still closed. But now we are on the discussion uh, to open some destination for tourists. For the business tourists, actually, we already opened in uh, Jakarta uh, as a hub, but we are now preparing to open Bali for the uh, for the tourism activities. Now, still in the discussion with uh, related ministry. Uh, for the for the product developments, uh, heritage tourism and also spiritual, we call it some uh, halal Muslim friendly tourism or or, or uh, religious tourism uh, as one of the focusing product that uh, stated in our long-term, medium and long-term plans. And because we has a lot of uh, heritage site to be uh, developed to be, to be visited. As you know, Indonesia is a diverse country with state six state recognized religious namely islam protest protestant catholics hinduism buddhism and confucian confucianists that live in harmony in indonesia however as a muslim majority population country indonesia most valued proposition arguably lies on the massive spread of Islam in Java through the existence of the nine holy patriarchs, widely known as Wali Songo. Uh, as you know that uh, Indonesia also has a lot of heritage uh, from Buddhism era as well as for Hinduism. We call it here that the very well known is Candi Borobudur. But uh, we also has a, a lot of uh, Islamic heritage uh, uh, especially in Aceh, in West Sumatra, in Java, especially in north part of Java, in Maluku as well, and uh, in some other region in Indonesia. In 2014, it was recorded that the tombs of Wali Songo is in the central. Uh, it lies from Cirebon in West Java to the to the eastern part of Java. Uh, that Wallisongo tombs were visited by no less than 12.4 million Indonesia pilgrims and around 3,000 foreign pilgrims with the intention of praying for a default wali, wali or taking lesson from their struggle and other historical milestone when they were alive. Another monumental and important religious site that despite Indonesia diversity, a Masjid Raya Baitur Rahman in Aceh Maybe some of you heard that this, this mosque uh, is not impacted when the tsunami arrived on to, in 2009. So this is the only building in Banda Aceh that not impacted, that not uh, uh, destruct uh, by the tsunami. And we also have Pura Tanah Lot from Hinduism in Bali, Maha Vihara Mojopahit uh, is for the of Hinduism in Mojokerto, we also have a Gua Maria or uh, Maria Cave Lorders in Kediri in East Java. And also we have the Masjid Chenghe in Surabaya that the mosque is to uh, is related to the to the visit of the Chinese uh, uh, Muslim leaders to Indonesia. And of course Masjid Istiqlal or Istiqlal Mosque in Jakarta and some other uh, uh, religious uh, sites in Indonesia. So in order to improve the value to the existing religious site and history, we have arranged four improvement strategies. We, we, are, we, are, uh, we do the product development. We, do, we have or we prepare a travel pattern for heritage tourism in central Java which uh, related to the uh, uh, to the Buddhism uh, era, but we also have the travel pattern for the Muslims uh, in the northern part of Java related to the Wali Songo or nine Walis, 
and we also has uh, the program for human human capital uh, development uh, we uh, have six uh, school tourism school uh, in under the ministry of tourism as well as we are uh, collaborate with other private university in indonesia and also we doing the the the uh, collaboration with the industry especially when we talk about the halal tourism or muslim friendly tourism we we working with other related parties to do the certifications of halal and also we do the promotion activation such uh, we now we're focusing still in the domestic tourists the ministry of tourism and creative economy is uh, what I was say before is currently kind of undertaking the product development of cultural heritage tourism routes, and also we continues to collaborate collaboration and discussion with the Ministry of Culture and Education to work hand in hand to explore locally embedded stories, narratives, and meaning of cultural heritage, so they can uh, be firmly told by the by the on site. We believe that the on-site interpretation is an essential element in the management management of cultural heritage tourist attraction. I think this is the one that maybe we can collaborate with the Uzbekistan in order to uh, to make the interpretation or the stories of the sites, the heritage sites. We also uh, uh, uh, improving halal tourism and human resource through three C. Uh, which is we develop in our uh, school the curriculum in uh, halal and certification and center of excellence. Last but not least, as we are aware that domestic tourism will be the first recover when the pandemic ends, we intensively promote the Muslim-friendly tourism attraction to several domestic channels, such as a recitation community. Uh, you know that in Indonesia, we have a lot of women to have a community for recitations and also in Islamic boarding school or we call it here pesantren. Maybe you know that we have a lot of pesantren here in Indonesia. Furthermore, I would be grateful if we can also endorse international travel, especially with historical link countries, including Uzbekistan. We will collaborate and communicate more intensively among the tourism and its related industry to share best practices and find mutual solutions that can further facilitate travel in regions. I will conclude my speech by thanking one again, University Pancasila team and also the tourism ministry of Uzbekistan. And I look forward to hearing further comments and input from the webinar. And I wish the participant has a fruitful webinar. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much. And please give a round of, a round of applause for Mrs. Rizky Handayani. Uh, Ibu Rizky, terima kasih banyak untuk uh, insightful. And there is a call for collaboration from uh, Mrs. Rizky Handayani, which we appreciate very much. Thank you, Ibu. Um, now we move on to uh, our next agenda. Uh, our next, um, uh, the next welcome speech will come from the Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Mr. Aziz Abdul Hakimov. Mr. Aziz, the time is yours. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear participants, lecturer scholars of this conference. Today, I am participating in this important conference from Bukhara'i Sharif, the holy city of Bukhara. First of all, on behalf of the government of the Republic of Uzbekistan and the Ministry of Tourism and Sport, I, do, I, I would like to express my kind appreciation for the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Creative uh, Economy of Indonesia, and Dr. Edi Tuet Hendrato, the rector of University on Pancasila for supporting and organizing this conference. Today's event has brought together scholars, experts from Indonesia and Uzbekistan travel industries. It, it 
creates the opportunity for people to share their ideas and insights on how to prepare for pilgrimage travel market for post-pandemic recovery. Dear colleagues, initiated by His Excellency, Mr. President Shafkat Mirziyoyev, Uzbekistan has been undertaking large-scale transformation in every sector of economy, including tourism. In particular, thanks to his open doors policy, number of visa-free regime countries increased from nine to 19 countries within, within three years. As a result of these reforms, international visitors have tripled in the last five years and reached 6.7 million people before pandemic. We have to mention that 88% of international visitors came from Muslim countries. In this regard, special attention is paid to creating the most comfortable condition for Muslim travelers. Dear friends, today, our country has about 800 cultural heritage sites, more than 2,200 heritage pieces included in UNESCO World Heritage List, including whole historical part of such ancient cities as Samarkand, Bukhara, Hiva, and, Sam and Shahrizabs. Most of these cultural heritage sites are architectural monuments associated with the Islam including ancient madrasas, towering mirat, mirat, minarets, domed mosques, as well as mausoleums of great scholars and scientists. Complex of mausoleum of Kutam ibn Abbas, Rathiallahu Anhum, mausoleum of the great Hadith scholars Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Tirmizi, and seventh century rare manuscript of the Holy Quran, known as the Mushaf of Usman ibn Affan attract Muslims from all over the world. It should be noted that the Uzbekistan's rich Islamic heritage is recognized by the world community. In 2007, Tashkent was declared as the capital of Islamic culture by UNESCO, and in 2020, Bukhara was declared as the cultural capital of Islamic world. According to MasterCard and Crescent Rating Global Muslim Travel Index 2019, Uzbekistan is among the top 20 countries in the world attracting Muslim travelers. At the same time, our country was recognized in the Halal Travel Frontier 2020 as a country <clears throat> that initiated a new trend in Muslim travel market, restoring the Islamic heritage. Today, pilgrimage tourism plays an important, an important role for travel and hospitality industry of Uzbekistan, especially in terms of recovering after COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, the presidential decree, which was adopted on February 9, 2021, to facilitate further development of Ziara tourism by providing wide range of benefits and government support for improvement of tourism infrastructure, service quality and capacity building. Dear participants, I am sure that this conference will be very fruitful for us to unite our efforts on tourism recovery. Taking this opportunity, I invite you all to visit Bukhara Samarkand, Termes, and other centers of Islamic civilization heritage in Uzbekistan. Thank you for your attention. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your welcoming speech. And ladies and gentlemen, before wow. we uh, arrive at the main session, uh, there will be a welcome speech for from the uh, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Republic of Uzbekistan to the Republic of uh, Indonesia, Mr. Ulukbek Kozukulov. Please, the time is yours. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Excellency Mr. Abdul Hakimov, Madam Rizki, we are participants. friendly relation which have very deep roots since the independence of uzbekistan indonesia has been one of the core partners in southeast asian region relation in the field of politics diplomacy and social culture have been developed when we talk about the most fast growing fields of the bilateral relation it is of course tourism especially ziarat and halal tourism which plays significant role Historically, Uzbekistan has played an important role in the development of Islamic culture and science. Now, Uzbekistan has a hundreds of the historical and Islamic monuments. And uh, as our president, His Excellency Shavkat Mirziyoyev says, these treasures belong not only to Uzbekistan, but to all mankind. In order to facilitate the visit of Indonesian tourists into these places, we gave uh, to them free visa regime. And I want to especially point out that Indonesia uh, was one of the first country who enjoyed this free visa regime. Recently, we have discussed uh, with the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy of Indonesia all prospectus of bilateral cooperation in tourism field during our friendly, warm and very constructive meeting which we established between Embassy of Uzbekistan and Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economic of Indonesia. I do believe that quite soon we can raise our tourism cooperation into new level and today's event one more time shows our commitment to attitude. Dear participants, one more time thank you for participating at today's event. Uh, availing myself of this opportunity I would like to assure that uh, all participants that Embassy of Uzbekistan in Jakarta is ready to operate 24-7 and facilitate the further development of cooperation between two countries. I really hope uh, that soon our citizens will mutually enjoy fantastic tourist destination of Uzbekistan and Indonesia. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your welcoming speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, join me in giving a round of applause for all uh, welcome speech from Ms. Rizky and from the Vice Prime Minister and also from the Your Excellency Ambassador. Okay. Um, now, uh, on behalf of the Rector of Universitas Pancasila and in my capacity as the Dean of the Faculty of Tourism, I would like to once again welcome you to this online joint international seminar or conference. We truly appreciate your time and participation. And we also would like to extend our gratitude to TDI of Uzbekistan in co-organizing this important event with us. <laughs> now we have arrived at the main event. I would like to introduce our moderator, Dr. Sarojini Imran, the head of the research and community engagement unit at our faculty of tourism. And she will be joined by Zari, Ms. Zarina Falieva, who will assist in providing summary in Uzbekistan language. Dr. Sarojini, please, the session is yours to moderate. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Defi Kalsar, our Dean, Faculty of Sison Pancasila University. Ladies and gentlemen, the participants, hello, welcome to this uh, conference events, a collaboration between Indonesia and Uzbekistan. It's about uh, evoking mind and spirit through uh, heritage and spiritual tourism lesson from the Indonesia and Uzbekistan. Yes, uh, Ms. Devi already introduced me. Yeah, my name is Sarojini. I am a uh, faculty of tourism. It is an honor for me to moderate the of today event accompanied with Ms. Zarina Valieva. Hi, Ms. Zarina. Glad we can work together here. Yeah, Thank Ms. Zarina is the representative of yeah. Zarina is the representative of the Tourism Development Institute, the Ministry, Ministry of uh, Tourism and Sport of, of Uzbekistan. We are really here with you 
as moderators, and we will give our attention for all of you. Before we start the presentation from the panelists, uh, because time is limited, let me read out the time. Uh, there will be five panelists. Each panelist has a presentation time above 15 minutes, guided by the moderator in turn and close, close with the short summary each by the moderator. The question and answer seasons will be held at the end of the event after the five panelists have finished their presentations. Okay, uh, the first panel, panel will be presented by uh, Mr. Tamir Mir Zayer, who will be guided by Jarina Faifa as a moderator. Jarina, time is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. On behalf of the Minister of Tourism and Sports uh, of the Republic of Uzbekistan, we also uh, express our appreciation and uh, thank you for all your efforts for in organizing this event, big event, this wonderful event. Then uh, let me uh, give the next speech uh, to Timur Mirzaev. He is the advisor of the Minister of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Timur Mirzaev uh, graduated from the Tashkent State Institute of Oriental Studies and began his career as a teacher in this university. In 2015, he worked uh, as a press secretary of the National Company of Uzbek Tourism, then head of the Pilgrim uh, Tourism Department of the State Committee for Tourism Development, uh, head of the Department for the Development of Certain Types of Tourism and uh, uh, Introduction of Innovations and Director and Advisor to the Director of the IPAC Yuli Office, Unitary Enterprise under the State Committee for Tourism. Timur Mirzaev is the author of the collection uh, 100 Wisdoms of Nawai in three languages, co-author of the book Tokyosh uh, Sogaiki Nur, uh, Erkin Vahidov uh, Zamondoshlar Nigohda, as well as the co-author of the collection Bahardan uh, Bahalar. Today, uh, Timur Mirzaev will uh, present us uh, the presentation uh, named Cooperation between Indonesia and Uzbekistan Unused Potential. Please, Mr. Timur, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum, uh, dear all. Uh, first of all, uh, dear Zarina, I would love to uh, just have the permission to share my screen and then start from the very beginning. Uh, once again, <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all participants and uh, my best regards to the Deputy uh, Prime Minister uh, of the Republic of Uzbekistan as, as well as the Minister of Tourism and Sports and also the team of the uh, Bapa San Diego Uno, the Indonesian Ministry of Tourism and Creative Industry, uh, and also Panchasila University team, and also as well as uh, uh, our uh, ambassador to Indonesia. And finally, the Institute of uh, Tourism Development under the Ministry of Tourism of Uzbekistan and also scholars, uh, academicians that are participating in this event uh, let me share the screen and to make this event a bit productive, more uh, to the target, uh, I would love to uh, continue or discontinue my Eng English speaking and switch to uh, my second language, if you allow. Zarina, please confirm if you can see the screen. Yes, Mr. Timur, we can see the screen. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, selamat siang, uh, teman-teman sahabat dari Indonesia. Saya senang sekali berada di uh, acara ini. Meskipun saya staff dari uh, Kementerian Pariwisata, saya senang sekali jadi bagian dari Indonesia juga karena saya pernah uh, 
selain dari Oriental Studies kuliah di uh, Indonesia beberapa waktu 20 tahun yang lalu. Jadi uh, tema hari ini adalah uh, untapped potential yang kita bisa kembangkan di antara Uzbekistan dan Indonesia. Lalu uh, secara umum saya akan apa namanya beberapa fakta yang saya uh, harus uh, mention uh, populasi Uzbekistan adalah paling banyak di Asia Tengah. Di Tashkent sendiri ada lebih dari 3 juta orang. Tadi uh, Menteri uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, dia, uh, Mr. Abdul Hakimov mentioned it. kita ada lebih dari uh, 8.000 9.000 uh, cultural and archaeological sites uh, dan uh, beberapanya yang utamanya sudah masuk UNESCO. Dan uh, total uh, visitor pada tahun sebelum pandemik lebih dari 6 juta. Dan tadi sudah dibilang bahwa uh, kita sudah dengan bantuannya az, uh, Presiden Uzbekistan Shavkat Mirziyoyev, kita sudah ada lebih dari 90 negara visa free dan lebih dari 50 negara dapat elektronik visa. Dan elektronik visa pun, visa free pun terutama kepada fokusnya Muslim countries. Dan juga polisi terakhir adalah uh, salah satunya ya open sky policy yang membiarkan membantu kita supaya uh, Indonesian travel agencies uh, in the, uh, our partners in Indonesia can make charter flights regular flights to any of the cities that has open sky policies that's Bukhara Samarkand Nukus and Ijan Termes so this uh, by, by the by the support of the, our deputy prime minister this initiative was uh, signed was decreed in the presidential decree on ziarah tourism and because of the liber liberalization open policy and also support to the tourism and investment you can see a lot of international brands are already working in uzbekistan so the other ada beberapa Indonesian uh, uh, investor juga and kita menyambut uh, investor Indonesia yang lainnya sektor uh, ekonomi uh, jadi kita ada proyeksi sebelum pandemik bahwa 20 2025 kita mencapai 11.8 juta uh, visitor dan uh, visitor dari Indonesia kita bangga sekali selama tiga tahun sudah melipat empat kali uh, as you see, uh, kita ada empat musim, uh, a lot of activities. Uh, Samarkand, Bukhara, Shahrisab, Shiva jadi pusat uh, pariwisata. Dan kita ada di berbagai rating, sangat tinggi, as a safest country, as a Muslim-friendly country, best destination and gastronomy. Uzbekistan sangat-sangat kaya. Ini uh, tourism police and the safety. And the solo woman traveler index kita sangat tinggi. Ini Shaza Belladonna juga presenter dari Indonesia. Ini foto saya. Uh, waktu saya mendampingi dia dan TV7 uh, kalau nggak salah. Ada beberapa apa namanya hotel berbintang lima dan uh, international brands di Tashkent, Samarkand, Bukhara dan transportasinya sangat bervariatif termasuk uh, double deckers, bullet trains, metro. Dan guides yang berbicara, berbicara bahasa Indonesia. Jadi Indonesian speaking guides are available for any non-English speaking tourist as well. Uh, dengan ilmu pengetahuan yang lengkap. Jadi untapped potential di Uzbekistan uh, dan Indonesia adalah ziarah turism. Seperti Ibu uh, Handayani, uh, Ibu Rizky Handayani tadi menceritakan bahwa ziarah turism uh, uh, apa kunjungan makam-makam juga tradisi Uzbek termasuk Wali Songo saya sangat bangga bahwa uh, Wali so ya, Wali Songo nomor satu uh, bapaknya kan Ibrahim As Samarkandi di Tuban beliau uh, As Samarkandi uh, uh, nama Jawanya Asmara Ibrahim Asmara bapak dari Jamadul Kubro kalau nggak salah berasal dari Samarkand Selain itu kita ada beberapa uh, imam besar di uh, agama Islam uh, yang sangat-sangat dihormati di antara umat Islam termasuk Imam Al-Bukhari. 
penulis atau pengarang hadis perawi hadis Sahih Al Bukhari, Imam At Tirmizi, Abu Mansur Maturudi disamarkan, Bahaut Naksmandi di Bukhara dan Abdul Khalik Gusdewani uh, di Uzbek. Semua lahirnya di Uzbek. Imam Al Bukhari adalah mungkin tokoh paling paling terkenal di antara orang Indonesia. Uh, ini karena ada kaitannya dengan sejarah, yaitu kunjungan Bung Karno pada kalau lihat di sini di koran uh, waktu itu 1956 September Bung Karno pernah kunjungi di sini. Ini catatan tangan oleh Bung Karno yang sangat menarik. Beliau pakai peribahasa Indonesia kepada rakyat Uzbekistan. Jauh di mata, dekat di hati. Artinya Meskipun Indonesia dan Uzbekistan begitu jauh, tapi tetap uh, hatinya sangat-sangat dekat. Jadi itu jadi profesi by the Sukarno, because as uh, our deputy prime minister said, as our ambassador mentioned, bahwa the first among the first countries that pre our president gave the visa-free uh, facility was Indonesia. And this is a recent, uh, just a photo of a few weeks ago, our Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Aziz Abdul Hakimov and uh, Rahmat Gobel, the Kementerian Pariwisata, membicarakan kerjasama antara uh, Uzbekistan uh, dan uh, Indonesia dalam bidang pariwisata dan investasi business. So, dari, uh, dengan inisiatifnya Menteri kita, kita sekarang kerjasama untuk bikin Sukarno's route, tak napak tila Sukarno, or join how Sukarno traveled, yaitu dari Jakarta ke Moskow, St. Petersburg, lalu Tashkent, Samarkand. It is a bigger road, and the and the smaller road includes Tashkent, Tashkent uh, farmers village, Samarkand, Imam Al Bukhari. And this is a photo from the archive of the 1956. So, uh, kita bisa kerjasama dengan uh, uh, Kementerian Pariwisata dan uh, Ekonomi Kreatif untuk mengembangkan uh, apa, rute tersebut. <coughs> uh, sebentar lagi. Oke, okay. dan kita Kementerian Pariwisata kerjasama dengan beberapa uh, institusi berbagai lembaga di Indonesia termasuk uh, Museum Istiqlal dan Taman Mini kita pernah mengadakan uh, galeri uh, foto pameran Uzbekistan negeri para imam uh, ini dari acara pembukaan dan ada ibu rektor uh, Universitas Gunadarma yang jadi ambassador tourism ambassador of Uzbekistan ini beberapa adegan dari uh, foto expo jadi kerjasama kita bisa dilanjutkan seperti ini jadi expo foto uh, untuk promosi ke Indonesia di Uzbekistan. Selain imam besar, Uzbekistan juga kaya dengan nama-nama besar dalam ilmu pengetahuan. The biggest great minds of the Islamic golden age come from Uzbekistan. Termasuk Al-Khorazmi, uh, Ahli Matematika Al-Biruni, Ibn Sina, Ahli Mediki, uh, Medicine, Ulughbek, uh, termasuk Babu. Raja Babu dan tadi uh, Ibu uh, uh, Ibu Rizki Handayani sama uh, Ibu Dewi Kau Kausar ya kalau nggak salah pernah menyebut bahwa fasilitasi halal turism termasuk uh, Muslim friendly facilities juga sangat penting jadi Uzbekistan Kementerian Pariwisata sangat sangat aktif sekarang untuk promosikan halal branding certification for the food local food restaurants and hotels tempat untuk uh, sholat uh, supaya di mana-mana di tempat pusat uh, pariwisata ada fasilitasi untuk sholat uh, untuk makan yang halal jadi kita juga <coughs> sangat bangga bahwa uh, makanan nasi yang terbesar uh, di Guinness World Record uh, adalah nasi Uzbek nasi Uzbek sangat juga terkenal di Indonesia nasi kabuli biryani tapi orang Indonesia sangat sangat suka. So during the pandemic, uh, Kementerian Pariwisata sangat aktif mempromosikan using online tour uh, ke Uzbekistan. So in during the lockdown, in our website, you can use this uh, online tour Uzbekistan.travel. Di 
in almost every museum, every architectural, uh, archaeological uh, object, what has been captured, 360 degrees view, so that uh, every tourist can enjoy online too. Juga Kita Kerja Kementerian Pariwisata is working on the smart technologies applications, termasuk Masjid Finder, Halal Finder, uh, veggie, veggie, veggie for the vegetarians for other preferences. So, aplikasi aplikasi dipakai supaya uh, pariwisata dari Indonesia dan lain, dari tempat lain bisa lebih uh, apa namanya navigasinya lebih cepat. Ini uh, some <coughs> investment in, in incentives for the business people in the tourism uh, sphere, like in Samarkand, Bukhara now has the Indonesian hotel. Uh, so I urge you to bring or to your invest in Indonesia, uh, in uh, Uzbekistan for tourism infrastructure because uh, the coming years after pandemic, tourism will be focusing on uh, Southeast Asia as well, plus uh, Muslim market. Uh, uh, so it will be a very good investment. So hotel construction, as you see, we are projecting, so having by 2025, over 3,000 uh, hotels. And there is uh, some facilities, facilitas oleh pemerintah untuk setiap kamar yang dibangun, kalau tiga, bintang tiga, bintang empat, diberikan fasilitas dan <coughs> tax um, cuts. So, <coughs> saya minta maaf, ada beberapa aspek yang kita bisa kerjasama. First priority is education. As Dadi Soda, uh, our Deputy Prime Minister, Ambassador, and uh, Ibu Handayani Soda Bilang, education is a key. And this is uh, our students, very talented students from the Silk Road University in Samarkand. I urge you uh, to invite Indonesian students to study in this Silk Road Samarkand University the one and only uh, tourism focusing university in the region, uh, English speaking, only foreign, you know, uh, in for foreign languages, all the classes with the best uh, campus in the region. And also uh, uh, we, we would love to invite you, kita juga apa namanya, mengajak Kementerian Kemenpar Indonesia untuk kerjasama dalam academic exchange uh, untuk college SMK uh, yang ada di bawah Kementerian Pariwisata itu 13. Jadi kemarin uh, tim kita pernah uh, kunjungi ke Malang, ada pesantren serta ada uh, Transformer Tourism College, jadi kita belajar dari sana. Dan kita sangat perlukan academicians uh, and uh, pedagogues to help us in uh, uh, cooperation. So I have a very fresh uh, proposal. Uh, kemarin ada post dari Bapak Sandi ya, di siapa yang rindu uh, berwisata ke Monas. Saya juga rindu, jadi saya uh, saya ajukan ya. Uh, uh, Zarina, can you hear me? Uh, I'm just need confirmation if everyone is listening. Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. We can okay. hear you very well. Okay, so, thank you. Jadi San, Bapak Sandi uh, Uno, Ibu, Ibu Sirojini Imran, uh, bisa di, didengar nggak? Bisa, Pak. That's good, that's good. Jadi ini post dari Bapak Sandi Uno, bikin apa, uh, made me think one cooperation. Jadi di Monas setelah pandemik saya ajak uh, acara gabungan ya. Acaranya apa? Guinness World Record Breaking. Acaranya apa? Acaranya di Uzbekistan, di Tashkent, ada mushaf tertua di dunia. Tertua. Jadi mushaf Tashkent, ini nama lainnya mushaf uh, Usman bin Affan. Jadi yang kita ajukan adalah kita bikin calligraphy event using each line, one line, jadi satu apa, baris untuk satu halaman. Kita bikin transparent dan mengajak 5000 kaligrafer bisa jadi profesional bisa jadi non profesional mahasiswa anak bandrasa jadi kita ajak 5000 anak-anak supaya dituliskan mushaf Tashkent di Monas panjangnya bisa jadi 10 km jadi it would be the biggest calligraphic writing of the Al-Qur'an 
of the oldest Al Quran. This way, it helps you know bring to Jakarta a lot of people, international people, a lot of international coverage for Indonesia as well, and also to popularize our heritage uh, of uh, oldest Al Quran that's in Tashkent. So this is one of the ideas that came uh, yesterday when I was reading uh, Bapa Sandi Uno's post. So our cooperation, uh, I will return to uh, five segments that we can cooperate in is, this is my final. Uh, uh, so uh, Bapa Sandi Uno and the team uh, is working on the creative industry. So creative industry and e-commerce would be one very big topic to uh, cooperate because uh, Indonesia has very good handicrafts, a lot of souvenir, uh, you know, creativity uh, part. So we, we need to work on the platform that promotes Indonesia, Uzbekistan craft to Indonesian people, including fashion designers, wood carving, leather, anything. It could be batik. And in this platform, Indonesian people can buy Uzbek craft and vice versa. Another aspect is agro and agro-tourism, agro products uh, and travels to the organic farms. And yang berikutnya olahraga, sports. As I know, uh, Bapak Sandi sangat suka dengan uh, basket and olahraga lainnya. Dan Kementerian Pariwisata kita sekarang sudah termasuk baru satu bulan lalu menjadi Ministry of Tourism and Sports. So saya ajukan mengadakan beberapa uh, sports events together, like uh, Pencasilat, uh, World Cup, Asian Cup in Uzbekistan, or some Uzbek traditional sports in uh, Indonesia. A lot of sport facilities can be used like skiing, Indonesian uh, athletes like gymnastics uh, or uh, bicycle or uh, boxing they can train in Uzbekistan. And also medical tourism is also authentic tourism. As I know, uh, a lot, a lot of Indonesian uh, people travel to Singapore and close uh, Korea for uh, authentic uh, surgery, plastic surgery or other. And this is usually very, very expensive. Jadi saya ajukan, carikan alternatif di Uzbekistan as well. And vice versa, Uzbek people now traveling a lot, termasuknya ke Israel, uh, ke India, ke Turkey. Jadi uh, Indonesia menjadi uh, pusat baru untuk some of the treatments. Uh, uh, sekalian, uh, combined with uh, traveling. And also academic exchange, summer camps, uh, let's say Muslim tourist camps, uh, yang bisa kita kembangkan uh, karena uh, banyak sekali sejarah Islam yang berada di Uzbekistan bisa kita kembangkan using camps for the students, camps for the school children, camps for the madrasa people. So it could be very useful uh, thing. And another aspect, it would be cinema. It would be cinema, uh, including starting from the uh, you know film about the arrival of the a visit of the Sukarno, or it could be love dramas, it could be songs, it could be, you know, uh, video, uh, uh, video related materials or wines, it could be TikTok materials. So this could be, we can use uh, uh, Uzbekistan and Indonesia to uh, cooperate, to promote each other. So uh, this is... Yes. Uh, we yeah. Thank you, Garina, right? for, your, for your mentioning. Terima kasih banyak. Uh, this is uh, uh, yang terakhir. Uh, jadi uh, kalau ada pertanyaan silakan. Ini uh, website kita Uzbekistan.travel. So all the information that you need that I told very superficially is available in this website. Terima kasih banyak sekali. Kalau ada pertanyaan saya siap untuk menjawab. Zarina, terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Timur. Uh, it was Timur Mirzaev, advisor to the Minister of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan, with nice presentation. And now I will deliver the speech to my colleague from uh, Indonesia, please. Okay. Thank you very much.
Ms. Zemina, and thank you for our Mr. Temur Mizayas for a very interesting presentation. This is make me so surprised. You are very fluent in Indonesian language and Western thank extensive you. knowledge about the Indonesia heritage. So interesting. Maybe later we can do research together, sir. Also, okay. Okay, for the next speaker, uh, panelists, we will listen to the second panelist, Professor Jobser Joseph M. Chir. May I introduce first? Uh, Professor Joseph M. Chir is um, here as a guest, like the Faculty of Tourism, Universitas Pancasila. Joseph is a co editor and chief of tourism geographies by Taylor and Francis. He is a professor at the Center for Tourism Research, Wakayama University. Joseph is also an adjunct professor at Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand, professor at UCSI, University of Malaysia, and adjunct a research fellow, Monash University, Australia. In 2021, he was elected to the board of PATA, Asia Pacific Travel Association. So he wrote many books on travel and tourism. So, uh, Professor Joseph and Chir, time is yours. It's yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will share my screen before I begin. Uh, let me see. Uh, just bear with me for one second. Now, am I able to share my screen? I think I can. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. So, can everyone see my screen and hear me? Yes. Oh, fantastic. So, thank you very much for the warm welcome. Um, uh, distinguished guests, um, colleagues, um, especially Deputy Minister Mrs. Rizky Handayani from the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, Indonesia. Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Mr. Aziz. Distinguished colleagues, guests, and those who are listening in Indonesia, Uzbekistan, Japan, and anywhere else. I extend warm greetings from Wakayama University in Japan. Um, firstly, I would like to thank Associate Professor Dr. Devi Kausar from the, the Dean of the Faculty of Tourism at Universitas Pancasilas for inviting me. Thank you. Um, Devi Sensei. Um, I am very privileged to be invited to this forum that acknowledges the close working ties between Universitas Panchasila and the Tourism Development Institute of Uzbekistan, as well as the two ministries. Congratulations to the organizers for organizing this um, a, a wonderful event that brings together government, industry, and researchers. As a researcher, I know how important it is to be talking to government and industry. I also um, um, would like to uh, thank everyone who's managed to log in. So with, without further ado, I'll get started. So I have been asked to speak about uh, spiritual tourism from an academic perspective. Unlike the very in impressive Mr. Mirzaev who can speak Bahasa Indonesia, Uzbek and English, I will have to speak, stick to English. So um, I, I, will, I will try not to um, uh, speak too fast. So I've been asked to speak on academic perspectives regarding spiritual tourism. And although my work covers a great deal more, um, I will keep it limited to this within the 15 minutes. I'm an Australian currently based in Japan. And here the opportunities for spiritual travel are immense, allowing for continuation of research on this topic. And I would like to acknowledge my colleague, uh, Kazue Nakamoto, the principal officer at the Center for Tourism Research, who has been working with me on this. This, this opening slide, some of you might recognize it. It's one of uh, Kyoto's most uh, visited attractions, the Fushimi Inari Shrine. Many visit places like this as tourists for the spectacle that it is, but also to strive to understand what this is all about and to possibly learn something, in this case about Shintoism, or to seek comfort or a space to reflect and contemplate about life. And the question I ask to everyone is that, is this spiritual tourism, religious tourism, or something other, some other type of tourism, or perhaps simply a tourist experience that has no spiritual meaning? So the academic perspectives I will speak about are drawn from uh, two sources, 
The main one is a special issue in the, in the journal Tourism Management Perspectives from 2017 on spiritual tourism. That was edited with my colleagues in Israel and Australia. The links are there if you, if you want to look further into it. And secondly, um, when, when uh, we talk about academic sources in the, in the journal, which I'm a co-editor in chief of Tourism Geographies, my colleagues, Dr. Cho, uh, Jayon Cho O'Regan and Dr. Michael Di Giovina has also published a special issue on geographies of religion and spirituality. So there's a lot of academic content there um, for those who are interested in this. So when we talk about spiritual tourism, we can see that um, uh, spiritual tourism is a subsector of the broader tourism industry and an industry in its own right. We see the UNWTO in 2013, when they started to focus very heavily on spiritual tourism said, the cultural exchange and dialogue that, that is evoked by spiritual tourism are the very cornerstones of mutual understanding, tolerance and respect, the fundamental building blocks of, blocks of sustainability. So perhaps spiritual tourism can serve to build closer ties between countries. And we see this here between Uzbekistan and Indonesia. So the UNWTO statement matches the idea of spiritual tourism as a solution to long-standing geopolitical, historical, or cultural aggravations, and maybe as a cure for religious intolerance. In my work, I take a critical view of spiritual tourism, monitoring what the dominating narratives are and what the issues are that underline contemporary spiritual tourism. If I can uh, base an, an example on the Hajj, which in contrast to spiritual tourism based on yoga experiences as an example, very popular in Indonesia, reveals the gap that exists between motivations that are intensely and essentially religious with other motivations that are purely secular or non-religious and based around leisure and wellness, such as yoga tourism in Indonesia. So in academic terms, we need to, we need to be able to define what exactly we mean. So defining spiritual tourism is debatable especially whether the underlying motivations for travel have spiritual or religious drivers. And is there a difference between spiritualism and religion itself? So any attempt at defining spiritual tourism must make allowance for travel that is motivated by either or both, um, you know, so religious or secular narratives and everything else in between. For example, there are other spiritually motivated journeys like pilgrimages along the Camino de Santiago or the Way of St. James, that while maintaining its religious heritage is driven by a mix of motivations, including leisure, the, the, the desire to be challenged, the desire to contemplate, or to simply just say, I've done it, I walked the Camino. Another example, the rise of halal tourism that Mrs. Risky Handayani referred to earlier reinforces the role that religion continues to play as a catalyst for travel and as a, as a component that influences travelers' destination choice. Another example, the changing face of Mecca, uh, demonstrates the industrialization of spiritual tourism built upon religious observance and pilgrimage. At the same time, there are Christian, Christian pilgrimages to the Holy Land and to Rome that reaffirm religious motivations are still central to spiritual tourism for many, many travelers. So in trying to define and understand specifically what spiritual travel is, we define spiritual travel as based largely on secular motivations that continue to drive global tourism. And while not steeped in relig religiosity, pays homage to more worldly things from which participants derive a range of benefits from feelings of accomplishment, for example, when travelers go to Mount Everest, or discovery when they go to Machu Picchu in Peru, or enlightenment in Egypt at the pyramids of Giza, or enhanced well being at Rishikesh in India, or satisfaction or wonderment when they go to Stonehenge in the UK, or experiencing indigenous cosmological um, spirituality in places like Uluru in Australia, where I'm from. So what are regarded as the allowable um, limits of change are obvious when spirituality becomes subject to changing issues, especially commodification, which many tourism scholars talk about. So when it comes to spirituality and its transformations and its contemporary place, like religion, 
the use and configurations of spirituality will be criticized and commended. But in contemporary times, spirituality has to some degree, as I say on the slide, assumed the void that is created as people have moved away from organized faith-based religion to less structured spiritual practice. Yoga, as I've already mentioned, is one example of this. And its development is not only linked to spirituality, but is very often tied to other non-spiritual things, such as well-being, lifestyle, and therapy. So in linking spirituality to travel and tourism, one of the main drivers of travel in modern times is the search for fulfillment and meaning in life, right? So spiritual tourism can offer that. So many claims are made about the potential for spiritual journeys to lead to greater peace and understanding among people, as well as allowing spiritual travelers to find themselves, redirect their lives, uh, uh, and redirecting their lives are very popular reasons that motivate people to go on spiritual journeys. But we argue that spiritual tourism means is a lot of things in terms of its concept and meanings, its practices, how significant it is. Very often spiritual travel and, and the things that are used for spiritual travel can resemble little of the historical origins of the site or their religious and secular meanings. So um, whether, whether spiritual travel is religious or secular, and non-religious remains a point for discussion. Spiritual travel is not one thing in particular. Instead, it comprises of travel where participants might seek a range of things, religious and non-religious, where the motive for action is generally underlined by the need for challenge or intellectual nourishment or transcendental um, development, or simply for travel itself. So spiritual tourism engages many people on many levels that other forms of tourism only touch upon. So if spirituality is the goal, traveling seems like an ideal setting within which it can be sought and sometimes even found. If spirituality is a practice or an attitude or connectivity, then travel offers many opportunities to experience our connection with others, with life in general, and most importantly, with ourselves. In the past, the debate about the distinction between a traveler and a tourist has preoccupied scholars. And now in the same way, the distinction between what is religious and what is spiritual has emerged. So the search for meaningful uh, and spiritual experiences in, in the theorizing of tourist experience goes beyond religious and or spiritual tourism. The UNWTO, for example, as I say on the slide there, their stance on spiritual tourism is not surprising given the acknowledged potential that it has for countries in the global south, especially what I mean by the global south is developing countries. Their view is that the responsible and sustainable use of natural and cultural assets in the development of spiritual tourism can create employment opportunities, generate income, alleviate poverty, curb rural uh, flight migration, prompt tourism product diversification, um, as, and nurture a sense of pride among communities and destinations about their religious and cultural heritage. So in developing uh, academic perspectives around spiritual tourism, we developed a conceptual framework. The development of this framework for spiritual tourism aligns with academic practice of integrating complex and continuously changing concepts toward the development of understanding what spiritual tourism is about. Here, we try to look at what the, spirit, what the, what the specific drivers are. If you look in the middle of this model, there is a Venn diagram with two circles. There are circular mot secular motivations, religious motivations, and in the middle, there are hybrid motivations that might be both secular and religious. So when we consider the secular drivers or motivations, it is clear that there are many specific drivers that motivate people to go on spiritual uh, tourism adventures. The focus tends to be on some kind of spiritual benefits, such as getting in touch with your inner self, uh, such opportunities are shaped by the commodification of spiritual tourism and religious heritage, um, either on its own or as a package of travel components. The secular drivers for spiritual tourism are about consumption of travel experiences by nature with some beneficial outcome to the traveler. On the other hand, if we look at the religious drivers, which is on the right-hand side of the model, we see that the religious motivations relate to practicing religion, 
And the drivers are underlined by things like religious observance when people go to the Hajj, ritualized practice, uh, reaffirming your identity, your religious identity, and cultural performance. So the purposes for spiritual tourism for, for, for, for religious travelers are linked to connectivity to a higher authority or deity, to God, with the rewards of religious practice based on institutionalized participation. Okay, so indeed the focus for very, very much, is very much on the institutional or religious frameworks that govern travel. So this model, at the bottom of the model, we look at the drivers focused on the self or on the institution. The self looks at spirituality, the religious, the institutional looks at religiosity. So in conclusion, because I think my time is coming up, tourism can be viewed as a convenient setting within, watch, within what, which tourists can examine different forms of spirituality, whether it is the bubble-like setting that gives modern people the time and space to reflect on life, or whether it is the safe environment to explore new forms of spirituality without the risk of being labeled as odd. Finally, my last slide, travel has, has long provided an antidote or a solution to wanderlust or the desire to travel and the search for meaning in life and is combined with spiritual endeavor. Such journeying captures the essence of what spiritual tourism is and there is a reference there. So in conclusion, thank you once again to the organizers for inviting me. Thank you uh, for the warm welcome and I'm happy to take any questions later on. So thank you very much. What we see there is a moving picture of Fushimi Inari Shrine and people practicing religious tourism, as uh, spiritual tourism. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Joseph Anchir. Very deep explanation and also in heritage meaning in tourism, and also explanation of meaning of uh, spirit for Japanese people, which is very important to increase our understanding about uh, everything you presented. Thank you very much. And then uh, very well for the next uh, panelist is Mr. Ashworth Sertanov that I will leave it again to Jarina. Thank you very much. And Jarina, uh, the second speaker. Yeah, thank you. The second speaker from Uzbekistan, uh, Asro Sultanov, head of the Department of the Center for Standardization and Certification of Tourism Services under the Ministry of Tourism and Sports of the Republic of Uzbekistan. He works on the developing of standards for the develop, developing tourism and rapidly responding and uh, to uh, resolving uh, any administrative problems, managing related legislative, regulatory and compliance uh, issues, head of financial economic department uh, in, in the past. So uh, Mr. Asro today uh, will deliver to us the presentation of role of halal standards in providing tourist services. Mr. Asro, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Zarina. Uh, thank you. Assalamu alaikum, dear participants of the online conference. Uh, I would like to thank the previous speakers, uh, Mr. Timur and uh, Professor Joseph M. Chir, uh, for the useful and actual, uh, actual information. Uh, my name is Asra Sultanov. I work as the head of uh, standardization department at the Center for Certification of Tourism Services and the Tourism and Sports Ministry. Uh, <clears throat> let me demonstrate uh, my screen. Uh, today, on my report, I will focus on the role of halal standards in the provision of tourism services. Uh, despite, uh, in fact, that the tourism industry in Uzbekistan is a new sector of economy, uh, it's developing rapidly. In a short time, we have achieved great results and set enormous goals for the future. Uh, great attention is paid to the diversification of tourism services in the country, including the provision of accommodation, catering, transport, excursions, and consulting services, as well as the organization of ski scopes and beaches. Uh, 
Uh, as a main consumer of uh, all above mentioned services are Muslims, uh, there is a need for a uh, halal approach to these services. Uh, more than 95% uh, of uh, population of Uzbekistan are Muslims uh, who strive to be uh, halal in everything they do. Uh, for example, uh, actually we don't uh, ask uh, if the food is halal or not in a national or family restaurants because we are sure that uh, they serve us uh, halal foods. Uh, in order to unify and uh, confirm uh, the services provided, halal standards are being implemented. Uh, the main body of standardization of Uzbekistan is the U standard agency. Uh, since 1st January uh, 2019, the U standard agency is a full member of standards and metrology institute for Islamic countries. In uh, 2019, a special certification body was established at the Institute of Standards under the U-Standard Agency uh, to certify products and services in accordance with the requirements of halal standards. Uh, at the initial stage, the special body is operating only for export products and uh, in the field of Ziara tourism, it's a hotel and uh, food services. Uh, on the basis of <coughs> mixed standards, uh, five state standards have been developed and implemented uh, in accordance with the requirements of halal certification in cooperation with the uh, religious committee uh, and relevant ministries and agencies of Uzbekistan in the food, uh, field of food, consumer goods, uh, tourism service and certification bodies, including uh, general uh, guide for halal foods, uh, halal food products, uh, specific uh, requirements for the application of OSDES uh, 3286 uh, for places where halal food and beverages are prepared, stored, and sold. Uh, requirements for halal certification bodies, uh, Islamic consumer goods, uh, part one, cosmetics and personal hygiene, general guide, and also Islamic consumer goods, uh, part two, the use of animal bones, skins, and wool, general guide. <clears throat> Along uh, with this, uh, the standard agency developed and uh, approved the state standard halal tourism services general requirements on the basis of OXMIC uh, 9 halal tourism services general requirements. Standard of the Institute of uh, Metrology of Islamic countries and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, uh, which will be effective from uh, 1st August 2029. Uh, 2021. After implementing the state standard, the specialists of the standard agency in cooperation with spe uh, specialists of the uh, State Unitary Enterprise uh, Center for Certification of Tourism Services will certify hotel service and other tourism services uh, in accordance with the requirements of HALA. Uh, the standard agency has developed a temporary order for certification products and services on the basis of HALA requirements. And according to this order, uh, optional certification of products and services, uh, including hotel services, will carry out on the basis of halal requirements. Uh, at the moment, <clears throat> we have state uh, standards for accommodation, uh, which include some uh, requirements for halal services. For example, uh, no uh, percent of. <laughs> Uh, for example, 30% uh, of rooms at the hotel must have Qibla directions and 10% uh, of them must have religious books uh, and praying mattresses. Uh, now, uh, all of hotels of Uzbekistan have rooms with Qibla directions and they have a uh, Quran. Also, many uh, of hotels uh, have praying rooms, which means now hotels are ready to provide halal services. Uh, thank you for your attention. It was my short uh, presentation about halal standards in Uzbekistan. Thank you very much. Mr. Zarina, uh, Mrs. Zarina, sorry. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Asror. Uh, now I will give the floor to my colleague from Indonesia, please. Uh, you can announce the second. Uh, and a speaker from Indonesian side. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Zarina. And uh, thank you very much for Mr. Ashro Sartanov. It's a very interesting uh, presentation that uh, uh, talk about the halal, halal uh, tourism that we are really going into in Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, for, for, for the next uh, panelists, uh, I I will introduce Mr. Harris Tiawan, a professional, professional archaeologist at the Indonesian Ministry of Education and Culture, Research and Technology. He is an expert uh, in the conservation of cultural heritage, especially the, the Borobudur uh, Temple conservation. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harris Setiawan, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarojini. Thank you very much, uh, Zarina, and for the magnificent presentation by Professor Joseph Sher and this Mr. Temur. What a wonderful country is Uzbekistan. This is the first time I joined the uh, tourism webinar, and it's been of very fruitful for me, and especially to study about the, the tourism, uh, not only in Indonesia, but also in Uzbekistan, with with have the same religious background, which is Islam. Uh, my presentation may be a bit different because I work as uh, archaeologist working for Borobudur Temple Compound World Heritage. So I would like to introduce to and present management and also what is the cultural heritage, what cultural heritage site Borobudur is. And also uh, I will take, I like to explain the, the condition of the surrounding Borobudur and the environment and then maybe some of the religious tourist activity of Borobudur which is Maybe a little bit a different background because Borobudur is a Buddhist monument. I don't know if in Uzbekistan there is a Buddhist religious sites or archaeological sites which its background is Buddhist. I don't. Uh, maybe I would like to know. And permission to share my presentation, Miss Sirajini. Uh, can you see my presentation, Dr. Sarajini? Yes. Okay. First of all, Your Excellency, Minister of Education and Culture, represented by uh, Madam Rizky Andayani, I would like to say grateful, and also the Vice Prime Minister of uh, Uzbekistan, also Minister of Tourism and Sport, I would, I would like to say grateful, and I would like to deliver it warm regard from the director of Borobudur Conservation Office. In this uh, time is Miss Madam Vivit Kasiati. Okay, my presentation is about the Borobudur Temple Compound. What is Borobudur Temple Compounds? Yeah, uh, I think you are already know that Borobudur Temple Compounds are one of World Heritage sites in Indonesia with this background is Buddhist. And Next, maybe. Yes, this is the history of Borobudur, uh, which is the Mahayana Buddhist temple, was built in the 8th and until 10th century AD during the Mataram Kuno Kingdom or ancient Mataram Kingdom built by Samaratunga. As you can see in the the monitor, the condition before Borobudur was discovered by the British colonialism era at the time, which is Thomas Stamford Raffles discovered in 1840. And then as you see, this is the condition before the restoration. As you know, Borobudur has restored twice, firstly in the 1907, and secondly, in the 1973, which is by the government of the Republic of the Indonesia. Yeah. 
maybe i will change my presentation because a bit of a uh, low connection here Sari, would you like us to share your screen or it's okay with you? Yes. Yeah, would you like us to share the PPT or? Yes, can you see my presentation? Uh, not coming yet. Okay, it's coming. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can see clearly. Yes, can you see it? Yes, uh, I would like to continue. Sorry, there's a bit of problem of connection here in Borobudur. I'm still in the Borobudur. And this temple was built uh, with the dynasty of Samaratunga in the 8th and 10th uh, century. And then the history of Borobudur, as I tell you before, it, it was rediscovered by Thomas Tamper Raffles and then documented first by the Wilson and then 1873 by the King Bergen. And lastly, uh, it inscribed by the UNESCO as the World Cultural Heritage Site of Indonesia. This is the first uh, picture is the uh, condition of Borobudur after the first restoration 1907. And then the second picture will be the condition of Borobudur after the second restoration. As you know, the condition of Borobudur before the restoration is uh, in the picture number three and number four, which is the condition of the floor of the Borobudur is uh, not very good because there is a massive catastrophic eruption in the year of 1006. And then this is the Borobudur cultural uh, heritage, which is inscribed by the UNESCO World Heritage List in the 1991. Uh, sorry, Dr. Sarojini, can you see my presentation? Yes, uh, but I think it's not moving. Is it still moving? Have the... Is this moving? Still on car. Not yet, not yet. Okay. Um, I will stop sharing my presentation because of a bit of a uh, bad connection here. Yes, I think. Then, yes, uh, we will have from the admin from here to open your presentation. So please close from you because we already have your presentation here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, it's You're clear okay. for me. Yes, next, maybe. Yes, this is the what I tell you about the World Heritage uh, Borobudur Temple Compound, which is situated in Mangalang, Central Java. And it was inscribed, inscribed in the World Heritage List in the 1991 with the serial number of uh, 592. It is situated in the central Java, which we call Borobudur Temple Compounds. Is not only the temple, but also the surrounding environment of Borobudur. We have the uh, religious concept of Buddhist worshiping at that time in the 8th and 10th century. So basically, there is more than one temple, including in the include in the World Heritage List 19, in 1991. Next. Next slide, please. And then this is the criteria. As you know, that uh, World Heritage also has the criteria. Uh, it is uh, the first criteria of Borobudur, which is the masterpiece of Buddhist architecture. As you know, the you see the Borobudur. Yeah, from the top, uh, you can see the Borobudur. And uh, if some people say that there is a chamber inside Borobudur, because the shape of Borobudur are pyramid shape. It is now, it is uh, already that 
we have some research that there is no chamber inside the Borobudur. So as the criteria one say that also Borobudur is using the interlocking system to uh, combine the stone, the stone block of Borobudur. They're using a Bertel uh, interlocking system. And then also the difference with the other stupa that Borobudur has a perforated stupa. It is the first criteria. And then next, please. The second, uh, but the architecture of Borobudur, it is very different. The concept of Borobudur is taking taken by the pilgrimage from India to Indonesia. But the concept is different, which is the architecture, the local genius of the Indonesian people or the archipelago people at the time uh, managed to build the temple, but it is very different from the original concept in India. And then the in Borobudur Temple compound, we have the architectural element of Borobudur, which is the temple, and then the element of the architectural element uh, that is, has the uh, kind of a shape of uh, mythical uh, animal at that time, who is carving in the Borobudur Temple relief. And Borobudur have 504 Buddhist statue. It's very a lot of statue in one temple. And then also, as uh, the beautiful relief, carving relief, the bus relief of Borobudur that is uh, uh, depicting the condition of the natural surrounding in, Boro, in Borobudur in the 8th and 10th century. Next, please. And then this is the criteria number two, which is the criteria of Borobudur, which is the architectural uh, art between 8th and 10th century and the revival of the architectural uh, uh, of the temple in the 13th and 16th century. As you know, that there is a plenty of temple in Indonesia, as I have uh, sold to you. The first will be Borobudur, and then the second will be Prambanan. The third uh, is the Jawi temple in East Java. It is also the, uh, all of these are the ancient temple built around 8th until 14th century. Next, please. Okay, next please. And then this is the also the criteria number two, but we jump to the criteria number six. There is a Borobudur is a plate of the form of lotus in the sacred flower of Buddha. And Borobudur temple compound is exceptional reflection of a blending of the very central idea of indigenous. It is combining the worshiping of the deity. Uh, in the ancient time of Indonesia with the Buddhist religious in the 8th and the 10th century. There is the three annually ritual uh, in Borobudur. The first thing will be Vaisak. It's very fascinating to see the Vaisak day in Borobudur. The Vaisak day is the birth of celebrating the birth of Siddhartha as a Buddha and also the pass away of the Buddha. In July, there is Asada and then the lastly, the April and May, we can see the Kapiu Mumbang. All of all of this uh, ritual are Buddhist ritual. So basically, is the uh, uh, as the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Borobudur is the dead monument. But according to the uh, national law of the Cultural Heritage Number uh, Eleven, year of two thousand and ten, it's not forbidden to uh, pray or to have the religious activity in Borobudur. Next. This is the attribute of the World Heritage of Borobudur. The first three will be the three building. So basically, Borobudur is not a single monument. Uh, a friend from the Uzbekistan, if you visit to Indonesia, please do visit the uh, Borobudur Temple Compound World Heritage. You can see some of the temple, not only Borobudur, there is uh, also the Pawan and Mandu Temple. And then we have the imaginary axis between the two, two temple. And also we have the splendid Borobudur cultural landscape, which is also depicting in the relief of the Borobudur. Also, you can try the maybe the traditional activity, cycling around the village of Borobudur, and maybe the doing some uh, everyday everyday uh, activity in the village of Borobudur. Next. And then this is the the uh, the three temple 
yeah, of the Borobudur, which is the World Cultural Heritage. There is a connection between three temples, Borobudur and Pawan and Mendu Temple. Is uh, there is a, a connection of these three temples because in, it is in the straight imaginary lines between the Borobudur, Pawan, and Mendu. There is a religious activity at that time. If you are the archaeologist, it's mean that God never create the the straight line of imaginary imaginary line. Who create the imaginary line is, is it is the human and the activity in the eighth and the tenth century, which is this temple are using as a religious practice of Buddha in the eighth century, worshiping the Buddha, uh, Siddhartha Gautama, and its deity. Next, maybe. Uh, Miss Imran, uh, I would like to kindly ask you to follow the time frame, okay? Because yes. time is really limited. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this is the correlation of the temple of the Borobudur. Next slide, please. And then this is the Mandut and Pawan and Temple and uh, Mandut Pawan Temple and the surrounding, which is a very beautiful temple in with the Buddhist monument. Next, please. And also the Mandu temple, as I tell you before, that also uh, this temple is uh, kind of the system of the religious activity at that time. And then Borobudur is uh, also a part of the religious activity before it's built. So basically in, in that time, there is a religious practices before the Buddhist era. Next slide. And then this is also the Ngawen temple. So if you visit the Indonesia, it's very multicultural uh, country. Besides, there is a uh, 90% more, or more than 90% the, the society of Indonesia are uh, Islamic uh, society, but they are uh, preserved all of this temple uh, in their uh, surrounding. Next. And this is the relief of the Borobudur. Uh, I will uh, explain later. Next. And then this, this is the understanding the ancient, the ancient Java through the relief because if there is a, have a very plenty of relief of the Borobudur or surrounding the uh, Borobudur from the foot to the top of Borobudur, which is depiction of the natural surrounding of Borobudur. If you are study the history of the ancient Java, you can uh, jump into the uh, this Mr. relief. Uh, Next, please. Mr. Hari, I need to remind you about time. It's already uh, finished. It's already finished. For your presentation. Okay, I will yes. end my presentation in this uh, slide. Maybe this is the trace of uh, ancient like ancient lake of Borobudur, which is the representing the holy water of eternity. It means if you are uh, visiting the Borobudur, visiting the Indonesia, uh, you can see the surrounding of Borobudur and then you can admire the Borobudur as the system of the ancient environment and cultural landscape in uh, ancient Java in the 8th and 10th century. Maybe that's all for me and uh, uh, very, very sorry, Dr. Sarojini Imran, okay. because uh, time is uh, uh, very limited. Uh, maybe I will uh, add uh, some of the slide yeah, later. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Hari. Mr. Sensen, uh, really give us the knowledge that attraction of heritage tourism not only can be enjoyed from the buildings that uh, have a potential attraction from the landscape and interrelated with other buildings like uh, temples. Okay, for the the last uh, panelist, I will give to Zarina again. Yeah, thank hey, Zarina. you. Zarina. Yes, uh, uh, next speaker is Ali Jan Ravshanov, teacher at the International Islamic Academy of Uzbekistan. And uh, he, is, uh, uh, he had many research uh, works and major scientific works and achievements are the, uh, he is the author of the 20 articles and abstracts as well as eight. Uh, and he holds a MD, MS degree in economics and financial management from the University of North uh, Carolina, Charlotte, in USA. Uh, 
he financial management from the University of North Carolina, Charles. Uh, and um, now uh, let me give the floor to Alijan Ravchanov and he will present us prospects of Ziara tourism in Uzbekistan. Please, Mr. Alijan, can you hear us? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Ms. Nikora. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu, dear guests, uh, participants of this conference. And thank you uh, to organizers for organizing such a beautiful and informative event. It was very helpful and beneficial to both sides. And uh, I, I would kindly request our organizers to make, uh, to make me the organizer because uh, I want to uh, to, to present my slides. Is it visible? Uh, yes, we can see the slide. Excellent. Okay, dear guests, uh, uh, since uh, we have uh, time constraints and uh, I want to uh, to do a short uh, short uh, presentation. I will I will not spend more than one minute on each slide, and uh, then uh, we will leave time for Q and A session. Uh, I am uh, Ali John Rafshan, senior lecturer at um, Islamic uh, Economics and Ziara Tourism Department of uh, International Islamic Academy of Uzbekistan. Today, I will speak about prospect of Ziara Tourism in Uzbekistan. So as we know, the central, uh, central uh, Uzbekistan is located in the heart of Central Asia, and uh, Uzbekistan is the uh, is the happy to have uh, almost all the monuments and the sightings related to Islamic heritage in the Central Asia. More than ninety percent of such uh, Islamic heritage uh, sightings are located in uh, uh, cities like Samarkand, Bukhara, Khiva, Chakhtisab, Tashkent. And so on. And uh, uh, our president, uh, when he spoke uh, at the UN uh, Assemb General Assembly a couple years ago, uh, he said that Islam calls us to kindness and peace preservation of genuine human beginning. Uh, I would like to especially note the invaluable contribution of the whole galaxy of outstanding representatives of the Central Asian Renaissance to the development of the Islamic and world civilization. One of them is Imam Bukhari, who is acclaimed all over the world as the author of Sahih al-Bukhari, the second most important book in Islam after Quran al-Karim. In order to preserve and study his richest legacy, disseminate his teachings on enlightened Islam, we decided to establish Imam Bukhari International Research Center in Samarkand. The activities of the Center for Islamic Civilization, which is being established in Tashkent, will contribute to the implementation of this task. So I just brought this statement because my next slides will be dedicated to this uh, noble scholar like Imam al-Bukhari. We all know, we, we all heard about Imam al-Bukhari and especially his book, Sahih al-Bukhari, or the formal name of the book is Jami al-Sahih, uh, was uh, compiled uh, after a collection of more than 600 600,000 uh, hadith narrations from our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And only more than uh, around 7,300 hadith was uh, taken uh, uh, from this uh, 600,000 hadith and compiled in this book. Therefore, it contains the most authentic narrations from our prophet. Uh, therefore, it was given uh, such a title that it's uh, the most authentic book after Quran. And Imam al-Bukhari, we know that he was born in Bukhara. He traveled uh, across all major Islamic cities like Mecca, Al-Madina, uh, Kufa, Basra, uh, Sham, Egypt, uh, and uh, the cities like Nishapur. Uh, he uh, spent more than 16 years to to uh, to get uh, collect this um, authentic hadith, and uh, and he returned to uh, his native land uh, in uh, 2050 Hijri. 
and mm-hmm. lived for uh, he he lived uh, his last years in Bukhara, but because of political reasons, he had to move to a village called uh, Hartang near Samarkand city, and he died there. Now, as you see in the picture, this is the mausoleum of Imam al Bukhari, and my previous uh, colleagues uh, who told about uh, Uzbekistan, about our scholars, also mentioned uh, the the the the. The case of uh, Mr. Sukharto, his visit to Samarkand, uh, to the tomb of Imam al-Bukhari. And it was really uh, fascinating and very touching. St- it was a very touching story, not only to uh, to Uzbeks, but also to all of the world, uh, uh, Muslims in all of the world. Uh, now, in 1998, the tomb of Imam al-Bukhari uh, and surrounding areas was renovated by our former president. And uh, it, uh, it has uh, nowadays a uh, mosque and madrasa, and uh, uh, also library, and also uh, international research center of uh, named after Al Bukhari. So it's now, uh, if you visit, you can see uh, the whole complex where Muslim traveler can find everything. Um, the next slide dedicated to Imam Al Tirmizi. So you also know about this noble scholar who was a student of Imam al-Bukhari and his book, Jami al-Sahih, also one of the most influential books. Uh, you may know that there are six uh, the most authentic hadith books. Uh, they are called the uh, Kutub uh, al-Sitta. They also say Sihaf uh, al-Sitta. And uh, uh, Imam Tirmizi al-Sahih, uh, uh, Jami al Sahih also included in the six books. And um, uh, the Imam at Tirmizi's uh, tomb, uh, also mausoleum, is uh, uh, located in the Subhan Darya, southern province of Uzbekistan. Uh, nowadays, uh, this mausoleum was uh, recently renovated uh, and uh, was uh, uh, all conditions for uh, travelers were, have been created. So, um, uh, our uh, brothers, sisters from Indonesia, when they visit Tashkent, Samarkand, Bukhara, they may also want to travel to uh, Termes and Sharabat, uh, where the uh, scholars are located. And uh, when we uh, speak about um, uh, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, if you travel to any Muslim country and you say, I'm from Uzbekistan, they say, ah, you are from land of scholars as Uzbekistan was a uh, was a native land for thousands and thousands uh, of uh, scholars uh, sheikhs uh, the imams uh, and scientists as well so as you see on the slide so there are many very influential uh, famous names like uh, Abu Mansur al Matrudi uh, uh, as we know Islamic Ummah is divided into two parts in the theological, uh, uh, in terms of theology, so in terms of aqidah, uh, the, the aqidah of Imam al Matrudi and aqidah of Imam al Ashari. So we are happy to have this uh, uh, Imam in, uh, in Samarkand. Uh, also, we have Burhanuddin al Marghinani. Uh, anyone familiar with fiqh? And know, uh, knows this name because uh, Imam al marghinanis uh, book, Al Hidayah, very famous, and uh, have been taught in the madrasas and Islamic uh, universities throughout the centuries. And uh, also, and the, on the uh, left side, I just want to mention about seven saints of Bukhara, starting from uh, Khoja Abdul Khalif al Rijdwani and ending with Bahaudan al Naqshbandi. This is the the unique, uh, unique uh, uh, golden chain where seven peers are located in one town uh, around uh, in Bukhara and the surrounding uh, uh, area of uh, Bukhara. Uh, so uh, also this, uh, uh, this is the golden chain, which was uh, now that spread all over the world. If you travel to Turkey or India or Arab countries, you can see Naqshbandi, Tariqa or Naqshbandi order and people who have been trained and educated with these teachings are now, they are educating and, and spiritually 
uh, uh, thousands and maybe millions of uh, uh, um, uh, fellow Muslims. Uh, also, when we talk about uh, Uzbekistan, a land of uh, a, a land of knowledge, we should uh, we should not uh, be limited with Islamic knowledge. Our land was also rich uh, in terms in terms of scientists and scholars who have been uh, uh, developing uh, uh, the other science, the fields of science like astronomy, mathematics, geometry, um, medicine, uh, philosophy, history, uh, literature, classical literature, and so on. So their names, uh, Abu Rahan al-Biruni, uh, Muhammad al-Kharazmi, Mahmoud al-Zamakhshari, Abitsena, or his uh, Muslim name is uh, Ibn Sina, Jamshid al-Kashi, Ali Kushchi, Mirza al and these names are really well known in uh, uh, not only in the uh, Islamic world, but in, in general. Um, so let me uh, stop uh, uh, um, uh, giving some uh, uh, uh, talk about uh, Tashkent. Tashkent is the capital of Uzbekistan, and Tashkent has been uh, uh, uh, growing and developing um, over the last 20 years with a lot of uh, buildings and um, monuments have been raised uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, the, now the city has more than 200 uh, mosques, uh, mas mas masajid open for all, for locals and foreigners. And uh, we have mausoleums like uh, of the Imam of uh, Abu Bakr Qafal Shashi, uh, in the place called uh, uh, Hast Imam or Hazrat Imam, I would uh, I should uh, tell one thing that uh, Indonesia is uh, practicing uh, mainly the Shafi Madhab of uh, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama, and we uh, Uzbeks uh, follow the Hanafi school of thought. And uh, uh, the uh, Tashkent in the past it used to be called as Shash, so Shash was. Uh, uh, had used to have uh, both uh, Hanafi and uh, Shafi Mashad, and uh, Abu Bakr Qafal Shashi was the, one of the greatest uh, as, uh, scholars in the Shafi Mashad. So now uh, this uh, Abu Bakr Qafal Shashi, who lived and uh, who lived and worked in Tashkent city, now is buried in the place called Hazrat Imam. So we Uzbeks love and. Uh, admire this uh, imam very much so uh, I, I would say in the the largest historical sightseeing in Tashkent city would be Hazrat Imam uh, the, the the the complex of uh, Abu Bakr Qafal Shashi uh, uh, also Uzbekistan is rich uh, in terms of manuscripts we our we have special institute called Abu Raihan the Bayruni uh, Oriental Studies Institute, where uh, thousands uh, of uh, manuscripts are kept. Yeah. And, and among them, uh, we, we have a big Langar Quran, which was written in the Hijazi script uh, of 8th century, and it's uh, kept in the Pashkadari region. We have, we have, yeah? I have to remind on time. Okay. I have to remind you, but the time is already a little okay. bit more. So let me uh, finish with this slide then. So this is the, uh, as you see on the slide, this is the Mus'haf of Hazrat Uthman ibn Affan. Uh, it was uh, actually the original book. It was uh, uh, used by Hazrat Uthman, radiallahu anhu. And, uh, and this book was brought to uh, Uzbekistan in the time of Amir Timur, uh, you you may you may heard uh, you may have heard about uh, the, the the the great Amir Timur. So he brought it it uh, this uh, up from Baghdad and on in the fourth, uh, 14th century. So a lot of Muslim travelers visit uh, Uzbekistan, especially Tashkent, to see uh, to see and enjoy this uh, this um, manuscripts. So, dear guests, uh, uh, 
I can share my uh, presentation with you. And these are uh, basically the, the next slides we'll be talking about other regions of uh, Uzbekistan like Kashkadarya, Surkhandarya, and Bukhara, and Samarkand, and so on. So uh, all these regions are uh, very rich in terms of uh, Islamic uh, sightings, uh, the, the, the tombs of uh, scholars and sheikhs, and also uh, uh, great libraries uh, of manuscripts for, for, the, for the ones who are interested in science. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening uh, to my presentation. Uh, shall we have any question? Please feel free to ask me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ali Rassanov, what is your right, tourism in Uzbekistan? I think if we have a chance, we will visit the Uzbekistan to have Ziyorat. There are many things there in there that we, we will know yeah, about the yeah. history of Islamic. Sure, sure. Very We're nice. here there. Okay, uh, finally, yeah, okay. finally we, we enter the question and answer season. Uh, uh, before we give opportunity for the question of the participant, let me convey uh, the discussions. There are some interesting points given by our partner team from us, but uh, because of time, maybe not all that uh, we can uh, discuss here. Uh, I will choose some. Is that uh, this is uh, interesting that. Uh, what uh, the measure could you suggest for the optimal implementation of the halal standard in the hotel industry in Uzbekistan based on experience of the business in Indonesia? I think so. Uh, we will give the chance for the, all the panelists to ensure this discuss together. Maybe we will answer because it is very interesting because Indonesia uh, now is uh, make the development uh, for the halal food uh, run in Indonesia's uh, provinces. This maybe uh, Zarina can help me to to moderate. Yes, of course. Uh, would you like us to, uh, how to say it, announce the questions? In the Uzbekistan side. Yeah, yeah, okay. And okay. Now my colleagues uh, from Tourism Development Institute, Nigora and Behruz, they will, uh, how to say it, uh, read the questions, okay? Yes. Um, yes, please. Can you, can you hear us? Uh, uh, is our sound is audible to everyone? Maybe, Mr. Ashrol, so Tana can give explanation and until so we can understand how the mutual from the Indonesia. I would ask the technical staff to, to keep our microphone on. Uh, uh, I would ask the technical staff to keep our microphone on. Do not switch it on, please. Yes, Ms. Imran and Ms. Sarina, don't switch off our microphone, please. We are going to have a QA session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They are participants. Our respect. Respectful uh, speakers of our conference, and we want to express our high appreciation for the organization of science a great um how to say conference with the, our institute. Uh, we want to thank all the reporters, speakers for the meaningful and helpful presentations, their reports. 
And now uh, with my colleague Pichruz, we are the staff of a Tourism Development Institute and we are from the international department and we are going to have with you this Q&A session. Uh, here is, uh, I have something to add. Uh, first of all, also, uh, uh, please accept my uh, great uh, gratitude and thanks, big thanks to, uh, from Uzbekistan side to Indonesia and the staff of the Manchester University and all the speakers who made presentations before. Uh, here is a, a thing which I would like to ask and add. Uh, we have the interpreter translators uh, joined us and uh, waiting eagerly to translate our speeches and Q&A Q and session into Uzbek because we have more than, how to say, 200 or 300 Uzbek listeners uh, join us today. Uh, they are waiting, uh, how to say, to get information in their native language in Uzbek. So uh, I would like to ask our interpreters, uh, interpreters to translate our speech and Q uh, questions and answers into Uzbek from Uzbek into English. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Nigora, uh, I, I think they, our conference is going very informally, very kind of interesting. And here is the questions which would like we would like to ask from our Indonesian partners, Indonesian professions, and the specialists uh, of the conference. Yes, we should uh, cover or deliver some kind of interesting uh, questions which we prepared by our side. Uh, for the experts of Indonesian uh, site, uh, for the experts, for scholars, maybe lecturers of your university. And um, you know that official and plenary session uh, uh, wrap up, but uh, meanwhile, enjoy your stay here at our Q&A session, session. Well, now my first question is, uh, what is the, the main level in maintaining mutual understanding and tolerance between different uh, maybe people or nationalities and faiths, mostly faiths, living in Indonesia. Uh, How you solve this problem in your country? Ms. Nigar, let's translate this also. Translate it into this big question. Indonesia, the Yashab Turuchi, Tuli Dinlar, Dinga Fos in Tong Learning, or Hasida. Uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, so please, this was the question. We, we cannot understand the uh, Uzbekistan language. Uh, maybe, should uh, we repeat the question? So what is the main um, trigger uh, in maintaining mutual understanding and tolerance between uh, the representative of different confessions living in Indonesia? Yeah. Do you understand this, the question? Uh, Yes, I, I understand this question, but uh, oh, who will uh, answer that's the question? You, you have uh, who will uh, give the answer? Maybe uh, uh, our team. Uh, Ari, can you explain yes. this? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Maybe uh, if I finish my presentation, I will tell about the tolerance of in, in Indonesia in the era in the eighth century. Since that time, we have uh, such a tolerant country because uh, some say that in the age of the ancient archipelago in eighth and century, we have been a tolerant uh, society at that time. It means that the influence of Hindu and Buddha is living together with the tradition, with the local tradition. They have we have the tradition of animism and dynamism, but it is uh, they are uh, cooperating each other. And then in the 10th until 14th century, there is a Hindu a kingdom, giant Hindu kingdom, very large kingdom, which is Majapahit. Also at that time, the influence of Islam also spread in Indonesia. 
This is why we can see that all of the archaeological remain from the Islamic era in the 14th until 20th century, still using the architectural element from Hindu and Buddha. It is no problem to us because we have a different concept. The architectural element is remain uh, the same, but the concept is different. Uh, the Madam uh, Rizky, for, Rizky from the Minister of uh, Tourism and Creative Autonomy also uh, underlined that Wali Songo, Wali Songo is spreading the Islam very well without violence uh, and uh, without conqueror. So that uh, at that time, with the archaeological uh, remain, we can study that the tolerance and, and in our society in the ancient uh, in the Indonesia or in the archipelago is uh, still uh, in the very good condition until today. That's why the Hindus and Buddha are stay together with Islam in the 10th until 13th century. And after 14th century, the Wali Songo influence are spreading to all, throughout the archipelago and spreading uh, Islam as well without violence, without conqueror. So basically is our society the Indonesian people is very active, creative, and selective people at that time. And they have the very uh, big uh, tolerance, very large tolerance to their surrounding. It means the religious activity, such as worshipping in the temple, such as praying in the Vihara uh, for Buddha, in the temple for Hindu, and etc., for Confucianism is uh, uh, protected very well by the society. Uh, if you visit the in Indonesia, uh, we can explain why the archaeological uh, remains such as Borobudur, the magnificent temple of Borobudur, is stay until today, and still in the good condition in the Islamic society of Indonesia. Thank you very much. Maybe there is my comment and opinion. I will okay, come back you. to Dr. Sarajini. Thank you very much. And after your uh, so meaningful uh, presentation, uh, we were inspired inspired to visit Indonesia. Yeah, of course. Translators, the translator in those back. Captain Rahmat, I hear me this presentation to get to get all the numbers. Busa all the job night would come bolagdim. Likin maile sa all the job biraman. Demek biz ning jamiyat mizda turli din etkot larga turli din larga etkot kulut shaxslar ning dostana va talentlik nasabatlar nasaqlab qolishiga turli sabablar bor. Birinch nabata tarix ke yuzksek sakizin shuning tasvirlarda. Zin Hududumazda, Hindu, Buddhism, Dinlare, Burga, Ama, Burga, Pido, Bulu, Burga, Tarkalip, Kilgan, Vabu, Dinler, Gait, Kotkuluchi, and Sonar, Dus, Dus Likta, Fuch Likta, Yachap Kelishka. Unitas Ramosna, Buffu, the Islam Tarkalagoslade, Vabu Tarkalish, the Rayoning Associ, um, uh, Uziga Hos Susiata, Boot in Chilip, Yulabella, Hitch, and the Zora only, Yoki Bosomses, Amalga Australian. Shuning uchun jamiyat yashovchi insonlar ham bu qonunlarga bu qoidalarga amal qilib tinchlik va tolerantlik munosabatini saqlab qolishga qodir bo'lishgan. Bunga dalolat beruvchi bir qator omillar bo'lib, ulardan biri bu tarixiy obidalar, arxitektura yodgorliklari. Biz agar arxitektura yodgorliklarimizga nazar tashlaydigan bo'lsak, bizning arxitekturamiz da Nafakat Islam diniga xos arxitektura, Islam madaniyatiga xos obidalar, balki Buddhism, Hinduism kabi dinlarning dinlarga xos obidalar ham butunligicha saqlanib qolgan. Jamiyat jamiyatning bizning mamlakatimizda yashovchi insonlarning ularga munosabati juda yaxshi, bir-birini hurmat qilib, tinchlik va totuvlikda yashab kelmoqda. Uning uchun uning uchun 14 asrlarda ham Boshqa dinlar kirib kelishi hech qanday bosimsiz va zo'ravonliksiz amalga oshirilgan, xuddi avvalgidek. Shuning uchun menimcha turli dinlarga e'tiqod qiluvchi insonlarning huquqlari hech qachon poymol etilmaydi va bir-biriga vatandoshlarimiz katta hurmat bilan yashashadi. Thank you very much. Okay, 
uh, uh, we have the, another question too. Uh, my question is about the conditions. Uh, what additional conditions or advances uh, in, tourism infrastructure, in tourism infrastructure have been uh, created for Muslim travelers, uh, Muslim country visitors in Indonesia? What kind of advances or additional conditions are made for uh, Muslim travelers in your country? Shall I translate? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, now, what I just saw, uh, tourism infrastructure is a bit و اندونزیا ده مسلمان زیارت چلر مسلمان توریستلر اکنون کندی شرایط لر یارتیگان. The question. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the question for Indonesian experts, please. Ms. Kausa, uh, I hope you heard. Uh, I guess uh, you have heard the question and our voice as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, I, I would like to explain that there are many interesting questions here, here but uh, not all panelists, I mean, from us, have a position to answer that because it's not their specialist. Uh, but uh, all the questions will be will be keep you know, find the answer from the related uh, experts and we will send the answer via uh, email for that too yeah. uh, and uh, i think for yeah yeah Sohada mutaxassislik bo'lmasligi mumkin, shuning uchun biz bu savollarni yozib olib, keyinchalik email orqali javoblarni yuboramiz. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to have the email from you uh, with the full context of answers and also we yes, also we... Our, uh, on the same uh, the conditions or advances in our country for Muslim travelers too. Yeah. Uh, it's it's okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, because I'm out, uh, I think we, we we will choose one question from from the chat. It's very very uh, many questions there, but I'm sure because the time not enough so we will choose one uh, question from Hussein uh, from Indonesia is the dynamical of uh, art and culture that developed in uh, during the Timon yeah? Timorit era changed the development of the tourism of Uzbekistan that's his concern is there any can, yes can you repeat the, the question please can you repeat the question, okay. please, and I will translate. Thank you. Okay. Um, Indonesia is, uh, is the dynamical of art and culture that developed during the Timurid era could change the development of tourism in Uzbekistan. That's his answer. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uzbekistan da Timuriler fabrika xos madaniyat va san'at oddiydalari turizmga bo'lgan munosabatni o'zgartirishga qodir bo'ldimi yoki ular qanday bir o'zgartirishga olib keldimi turizm miqyosida Uzbekistan in tourist touristic potential the Uzgar Shigal Pilalgum and Mochidola. Sağ ol, mevcut Uzbekistan tarafı
Ama bu soruyla hazır bize daha sesimiz cevap verildi. Aracım da daha ses. Well, we have experts from uh, Samarkand Tourism and Service University, Professor And now we ask, uh, kindly ask him to ask Assalamu alaikum, hürmetli konferansiye katna suçları. Demek bir vasıta Respublikamızdaki bugün ki ziyaret turizmi hakkında fikir yürütken de biz ayetişimiz gerek 800 binden artık tarihi, arkeologik, turistik resurslarımız mevcut böyle bugün ki kunda Respublikamızda. Ee, şundan afsus ki bugünkü kunda uçtan biri fakat turizm maksatlarda faydalanılmakta. Şu orunda men e, hürmetli konferansiye katılışlarını harici demek mehmanlarda ham fikrini bilmak şeydim. Endonezya'daki camı mavcud bulgen ziyaret gahlarını hamması ham turizm maksatları da işletili yaptım ikin. Ee, bu ham saval man uzun hazır cevap bir işgah hareket kılamam bizde. Demek ki manki ulanı tarihi, ulanı e, demek e, arkitekturası, ulanı infrastrukturasını rövajlantırış bu arası da davulat tamamından, İndonezya memleketi tamamından kanday işler kılını yaptı iken. Bize de cüdekatta işler amalga aşırılı yaptı bu, bu arada. Lekin barı bir, şunda ziyaret yoklar bor ki tümanlarda, vilayetlerde, Mahalli halk fakat beladı ve ziyaret kıladı. Lekin halige harici yok ki içki turizm nirvajlantırışke bu, bu kam, kamlik kıladı. Şu manada man bulanı fikrini bilmak şeydim. Hürmetli mehmanlarımızın iştirakçılarını fikrini. Bularda kandaydır bir metodika yok ki kandaydır bir usul bor mu? Yani uşa mavcud tarihi ziyaret gaflarını kadastırı. Paspartizasyası kılıngan mı ki? Eğer kılıngan olsa, kaysa, kaysa usullar asası da kılıngan. Ulanı tajribasını belki e, organışımız kerak mı degen fikir daman. Bizde hazır bu borada katta işler keti yaptı. Her bir tumanda, her bir demek vilayette, hükümetimiz tamamen kabul kılıngan farmon asası da e, ularga investorlar demek, e, investisyonlar acıratılıp Katta itibar birli yaptı. Lekin, lekin man takrar etmem. Bir vasıta turizm ge, kısmat kıladıgın e, ziyaret gaflaning sahne bizde cüda ham kop. Yukarıda maruzacılarımız takitlerde bunu. Ama uşalanın infrastrukturasını rövajlantırış, ulanın mükemmel tarihini e, demek çukur tahlil kılıp, harici mekmanlar ge ve içki turizm ge kısmat kılış şun hal anca iş kılışımız kerek. Degen fikirden var. Etibarlarınız için rahmet. Sağol ki cevap bir alasın. Sağol ki yine bir madde takrarla sengiz mümkün mü? Aha. Uzbekistan'da Timuriler, Avrilya, Fos, Sanat ve Madaniyat Yodgarlikleri turizm rivojlanışı ki kandı dur Türkiye buldu mu? Aha. Timuriler doğrudaki demek e, yadgarlıklar ya ziyaretgahlar bir vasıta turizmde hazır cüda katta yordan beri yaptı. Çünkü e, ulanı tarihi bugünkü kumda bizde alımlarımız tamamen keng yaratılgen ve e, fakat onu demek reklamamaz. Yani o hafta video klipler ve e, demek e, bir vasıta e, kerek boysa Katalıklar yaratış masalası ham turuptu. Bu söz ben ayetken de bana bu turizm doğru da Timuriler doğru da demek anlamalarımız hakkındaki malumatlar benimce tuğla yeterli ve turizmge ham içki turizmge ham kırıcı ve harici turizmge bir vasıta katta yordam korsatı yaptı. Rahmet. So The answer to this question is that the monuments uh, of uh, Timurid's era have contributed a lot to the development of tourism and to the process of attracting pilgrims and tourists into our country. There are a number of reasons for, uh, for this. First of all, they have been fully covered in media, internet, television. There is a lot of information available about the uh, members of Timurid's family, their contribution to art, history, and uh, uh, culture. 
and the, the monuments are under uh, protection of the government at, and cherished by the local people. Therefore, uh, I, I think that the major contributors to the development of tourism, the monuments of this particular era. Yes. Okay, this is a very uh, in, informative uh, explanation for us uh, because uh, maybe because this is uh, our first uh, collaboration uh, conference with different languages. I think uh, for the next occasion we are will be make it better. And uh, thank you very much for the answer. And uh, there was a question also by the expert. Yeah. Is it okay if uh, I ask it? Because the, the time is run, I think so we, we have to finish the, this uh, session of the panelists. And thank you very much for all the panelists because the, uh, the, the pr presentations is very important for us to know and to gain our knowledge about uh, Indonesia and uh, Uzbekistan and the tourism area. And uh, for the next uh, occasion that uh, it will be a ceremonial and I will give to the house, uh, Miss, Mrs. Daffy, is, uh, time is yours. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarojini and also Ms. Zarina for moderating the session um, and all the speakers for their insightful presentations and for addressing questions from the audience. Uh, now we have arrived at the appreciation and awarding of certificates for our speakers. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Joseph Tier um has uh, left uh, the zoom because uh, he has another meeting and also because it's quite late in japan <laughs> it's um 5 30 uh, japan time and he has another faculty meeting in uh, his uh, university but uh, nonetheless we would like to show the certificate uh, for uh, professor joseph cheer organizing committee can you share Certificate for Professor Joseph Cheer. Yeah, thank you very much. So I, I will give the picture uh, to Professor Joseph Cheer and uh, he apologized to um, all the participants for not being able to stay until the end of the uh, seminar. Uh, and next, um, we would like to uh, give the token of our appreciation to Mr. Temur Mirzaev. Good day, I'm here. Okay, Mr. Temur, terima kasih banyak. Thank you so much. Sama -sama. It's my pleasure. <laughs> okay, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, senang sekali mendengar presentasi. Always ready. You are muted. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, amazing, luar biasa, uh, Pak Temur. Let me take a picture of this. Okay, terima kasih. And uh, the following appreciation goes to Mr. Asraf Sultanov. Okay, Mr. Asraf, thank you very much for your great uh, sharing today. Thank you, Mr. Asraf. And uh, next, uh, certificate is presented to Mr. Hari Setiawan. Yes, stand by. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak Hari, for sharing. Thank you so much for Thank your you. and insights. Thank you, Dewi. Thank you. And last but not least, Mr. Ali John Rafshanov, please accept this certificate of appreciation. Thank you. Mr. Ali John is still here with us. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the On behalf of Ali John Rapshano. 
Thank you, organizing committee, for showing the certificate. Okay, so um, the uh, official online seminar is uh, actually finished. We thank you very much. Uh, is, there is another agenda, uh, which I have to confirm with our uh, Uzbekistan counterpart. Um, organizing committee uh, is our agenda. So um, our agenda, uh, our next agenda is, um, uh, we, are, we are working towards uh, an MOU of cooperation between Universitas Pancasila and Bukhara Technical College. So um, I think uh, our counterpart from Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan uh, um, yes. have, um, have uh, prepared the draft which will be signed by uh, our rector and which also be signed by um, a representative of Bukhara Technical College or the director of Te uh, Bukhara Technical College uh, later uh, in uh, coming few days. So uh, if we would like to still have that, uh, you know, um, uh, ceremony, uh, we can use this Zoom. Well, thank you, Ms. Debbie. Uh, and uh, as you know that uh, we are during uh, some uh, months, we are having uh, some kind of uh, negotiations between Pancasella University and our Bukhara uh, Tourism College. And today we have such a great uh, ceremony of uh, signing of MOU between your uh, university and our Bukhara College. Well, and the director of the college, Azim John, is here. Azim John, can you join? Azim John, yeah, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with Panchasila Universiteti rahbariyatiga shu bilan birga turizmni rivojlantirish instituti hamda biz bilan hamkorlikda faoliyat yuritayotgan barcha tashkilotlarga o'z minnatdorchiligimizni bildiramiz. First of all, I would like to express our gratitude to uh, the participants of the today's event, as well as the uh, administration of Panchasila University in Indonesia and the uh, administration and representatives of Tourism Committee in uh, Uzbekistan for organizing this event. memorandum <laughs> Oldumuz gapıydan cüdekette mahsadlana amal gösterişte muhum hücret bölüp hizmet kıladı. The memorandum we are going to sign, uh, I'm sure uh, will serve as an important document which will uh, project our way in the uh, mutual cooperation in the future. Well, thank you Mr. Azam John and now, Ms. Devi, let's uh, uh, go to our next step of ceremony of signing uh, this uh, MOUs between our two educational organizations. We also hope that it will uh, serve for our further mutual beneficial cooperation. Uh, organizing committee, uh, can you show the, uh, the, the MOU draft, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. We have presented the draft of MOU to our rector's office uh, and our uh, vice rector for cooperation uh, has uh, given us uh, the number, the letter number, 
to make the document uh, more official. And then uh, we can proceed in having the document signed by our rector, who is actually very busy today. He has uh, three meetings. So unfortunately, we, we cannot show you yet the signed MOU, but uh, we will, you know, we will uh, proceed with the process um, in a few days. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to be a good person. I'm not sure if you're going to be a good person. I'm not sure if you're going to be a good person. I'm not sure if you're going to be a good person. I'm not sure if you're going to be a good person. Fatma, az önce neki siz korkuyu, bunu ikiz etersiz, arginalde bunlar dektirler korkuyu. Thank you very much, Mr. Azim. Congratulations, and we wish you beneficial cooperation in future. I'm sure we will have a beneficial cooperation in the future. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Uh, Azim Adizov uh, from Bukhara Technical College. Um, now, Ketter uh, Ahmad. Amin man ki bu memorandum ning imzolanishi ikki davlat o'rtasidagi hamkorlikning kayishiga va rivojiga turtki bo'ladi. Buxoro texnika kollejining direktori Azima Kaga ham katta rahmat. O'z mundan minnatdorchiligimni bildiraman. Katta rahmat, biz ham o'z minnatdorchiligimni bildiramiz. Thank you. We also express our gratitude to the Indonesian party. Thank you very much. And uh, can, the yeah. can the organizing committee advise, advise me whether uh, we will have uh, a picture together yeah. or <laughs> other announcement? Do you mean the picture of the uh, conference? Uh, all, all the participants of uh, mm -hmm. the That's conference. Конференция до катнашеет кен катнашу чуларнин блам бргелик тарасингиол се тарасингиол чу се голаде ма. Yes, of course we can take a picture. We are ready to have a nice moment to have captured on the photograph. Okay. Can we have everyone in the room, please? Not only a spotlight, <laughs> spotlighted person. Uh, can you help? With uh, the okay. Uh, it's on the uh, organizations, I would say. You need to show all the participants. please. Technical staff can do it. <coughs> okay, okay, so we have everyone now. Mm -hmm. So I will Can take... you learn your Oh, we have 14 pages. <laughs> okay, we have 328 uh, persons still uh, joining us right now. So please. Uh, uh, yeah. I will take the picture or the organizing committee will take the picture? Kim on, Yasmin. Yes, <laughs> okay, first page, yeah. Okay, second page. Okay, keep your smile, people. <laughs> Okay, fourth page, fifth page. I don't know how many page in your place, but mine is 13 here. <laughs> okay, six. Okay, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and the last page. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, staying us, staying with us until the end. Thank you very much, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Miss Elena, for for co-organizing this with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you too very much for organization, for your sanctity, for efforts on organizing of our such great conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zarina. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank day. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should have taken picture from the start, but I I I <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Negora. Thank you, Ms. Arajini Imran, for your efforts, for your participating, moderating of our conference. It was yeah. a really good job. And we hope that it is an honor team. Pahari, makasih banyak, Pahari. Ya, Pahari, terima kasih. Selamat Bu Devi, selamat Bu Sarojini. Terima kasih Bu Kunti. Thank you Bu. Have a nice day. Welcome to Uzbekistan. Okay. Hello, bye bye. Udah mau dimatiin ini? Also, we want to say thank you for all the participants of our conference and all the materials of the conference you can get and all the certificates you can get from your email. Конференция дает нашим учителям барка среди узбекистанцев в конференция материалы и мейл адрес для разделов для разделов. Also, thank you to the, trans, the translators, interpreters, yeah, for the Shabbat You are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you, Pahari.